Wisdom: The Midway Albatross, surviving the Japanese tsunami and other disasters for over sixty years. Written by Darcy Pattison, illustrated by Kitty Harville, and read by Greg Robinson. Many years ago, on the tiny Midway Atoll in the heart of the Pacific Ocean, a wild chick hatched. She was a goony bird, a Lysan albatross. The crowded, noisy rookery could be a dangerous place. Many chicks would not live long enough to learn to fly. Somehow, Goony survived. When it was time to migrate, Goony was gone for a long time. For five or six or seven or eight years, she soared. When she was hungry, she swooped down to land on the waves to eat. She liked squid best, but she wasn't picky. And always, while eating, she watched the water because sharks like to eat goonies. Somehow, Goony survived. One day in 1952, while Goony was still a youngster soaring over the open ocean, an earthquake hit Kamchatka, Russia, and a tsunami sped across the Pacific Ocean to crash against the shores of Midway Atoll and Hawaii. If she noticed the huge wave, it didn't bother her. Goony just flew above the tsunami. This time, it was easy to survive. Finally, after years of soaring, Goony flew south in search of love. In about 1956, she landed back on Midway Atoll. There, in a noisy courtship dance, she mated. Soon after, Goony laid an egg. She didn't squawk or call; she just sat. Nothing could make her move off the nest until her mate came back from fishing. She didn't move for navy men who sailed in submarines or flew in airplanes. She didn't move for airplanes or trucks or carts. She just sat. That's when a research scientist, Chandler Robbins, caught her and banded her on December tenth, nineteen fifty-six. If she was caught again, the metal leg band would identify her for scientific study. Goony didn't care about the metal band on her leg. Soon, she and her mate were too busy soaring out to sea and coming back to regurgitate squid to feed the chick. Finally, when the weather grew warm, the family flew north. Goony and her mate ate and migrated and soared and raised a new chick each year or so. Thunderstorms came and went, tropical storms came and went, hurricanes came and went. Every year, more of Goony's rookery mates were gone, lost to the wild. By the time she was twenty, she had outlived eighty-seven percent of her rookery mates. Somehow, Goony survived. Eating was always dangerous for Goony. But by the 1960s, it became even more dangerous. Sitting on the waves and fishing, many Lysan albatrosses started to eat plastic. Some ate plastic and ate plastic and ate plastic until their stomachs were so full that no food would fit. They starved to death. Somehow, Goony survived. Then. Another danger threatened Goony and her family: long line fishing. On a long line, up to twenty-five hundred hand-baited hooks are tied to fishing lines several miles long. Many Lysan albatrosses were caught in the lines and died. Somehow, Goony survived. In February two thousand two, Chandler Robbins came back to Midway Atoll. Somehow, he happened to catch Goony again. This time, the scientists realized she was at least fifty-one years old, one of the oldest known wild birds. To keep track of this remarkable bird, scientists decided two things. First, she got a bright red, easy-to-spot leg band with the number Z three three three. Second, she got a name, Wisdom, Wisdom the Goony Bird. Returned to lay an egg and hatch a new baby chick in 2008, in 2009, and in 2010. In 2011, Wisdom laid yet another egg, maybe her 35th. 
everyone wondered, would this chick live as long as wisdom? The chick hatched in February. A winter storm hit soon after with a big storm surge, washing across the island and destroying about 10,000 chicks. Somehow, Wisdom and her chick survived. Then, on March 11, 2011, an earthquake struck off the shore of Japan. It sent a tsunami wave west to overrun Tohoku, Japan, destroying entire cities, killing thousands of people, and damaging a nuclear plant. But the wave also traveled east toward Midway Atoll. Scientists knew the tsunami was coming, so they moved to the top of a three-story building. About midnight on March 11th, the tsunami overran part of Midway Atoll. The scientists said it was scary because they couldn't see the water coming, they just heard it. All the scientists survived, but everyone wondered about the nesting birds. Wisdom's nest was on high ground, but was it high enough? No one knew. The morning sun showed the devastation. Many birds were dead, including 110,000 chicks and over 2,000 adult lice on albatrosses. Where was wisdom? Where was her chick? When they finally had time to look, good news! Wisdom's nest had survived. The chick was safe. But where was wisdom? No one knew. Everyone waited. A week went by. Still no wisdom. Eight days. No wisdom. Nine days. No wisdom. Finally, on March 20th, the answer came. Scientists spotted wisdom feeding her chick. Somehow, wisdom had survived. Again. For over 60 years, Wisdom had been threatened by storms and wind and sharks and plastic and long-line fishing and earthquakes and tsunamis. All that time, Wisdom had lived wild, soaring over the heart of the great blue ocean and raising dozens of chicks. For over sixty years, somehow, Wisdom survived. Facts About Wisdom Lysan albatross, Thibastria immutabilis. The Lysan albatross is best known for its gliding flight, awkward landings, and elaborate courtship rituals. These birds spend nearly half the year at sea, not touching land until breeding season. Though large for a seabird, the Lysan is small for an albatross. We don't know the average lifespan of Lysans, but wisdom is over 60 years old. These birds are named for Lysan, one of their Hawaiian island breeding colonies. Born? Unknown. Presumed Midway Atoll circa 1950. Weight? About 8 pounds. Wingspan? About 6.5 feet. 77 to 80 inches or about 2 meters. The oldest bird in the world. Wisdom's age has been documented with metal bands on her leg. December 10, 1956, first banded by Chandler Robbins. Bird was presumed to be five years old, the minimum age for first breeding. January 20, 1966, second banding by Chandler Robbins. February 18, 1985, third banding. March 4, 1993, fourth banding. February 2002, fifth banding by Chandler Robbins. December 6, 2006, two new bandings. This time, Wisdom received a new metal band and a bright red band, Z333, and she was given the name Wisdom by former refuge biologist and current deputy refuge manager, John Claviter. Typical year for a Lysan albatross, October. In late October, the first Lysan albatrosses return to nesting sites. November. Most have returned. By late November, some eggs are laid. December. Most eggs are laid this month. January. Late January, Lysan albatross chicks start to hatch. February. 
By the end of the month, all chicks have hatched. March. Chicks are starting to wander from the nest. April. Chicks continue to grow and become more adventurous. May. Chicks show some adult feathers. June. Chicks are almost full grown. Some adults are leaving the island. July. More juvenile lice on albatrosses are fledging, and only a few adults remain in the nesting area. August. By early August, all juvenile lice on albatross have flown to sea. September. No lice on albatrosses are left on the island. The end.